You will hear a number of different recordings and you'll have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a woman phoning to complain about the item she ordered last week. First, you'll have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, you are through to the Complaints Department at Clifton Antiques. Before we begin, I'll just need to take a few details from you. Is that OK? Yes, of course, no problem. OK, can I please have your full name? My name is Anna Lumley. That's Anna L-U-M-L-E-Y. Right. The name is Anna Lumley, so Lumley has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello. You are through to the Complaints Department at Clifton Antiques. Before we begin, I'll just need to take a few details from you. Is that OK? Yes, of course. No problem. OK. Can I please have your full name? My name is Anna Lumley. That's Anna L-U-M-L-E-Y. Right, and could you give me a contact number which we can use to reach you during the week? My mobile phone number is 077-876-345. OK, great. How can I help you today, Anna? I ordered a large number of items from you last week on the 20th of February and was expecting them to be delivered on the 27th. However, only half of the shipment has arrived. I just want to make sure that they haven't been lost in transit. Right, OK. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Let me track the parcel and see if I can find out when you should expect to receive the rest of your items. What did you list as the delivery address? I arranged for the parcel to be delivered from your warehouse on Ardell Road to my work address at 235 Ackendale Road. What was it, sorry? 235 Ackendale Road. A... K-E-N-D-A-L-E -E. East Sea? Yes, East Sea. Right, OK. I've found your parcel here on our system. I can see that you've received your shipment. However, nothing is mentioned about the missing items. I would advise that you wait for two days. And if the other items don't arrive then, it may be necessary for you to claim insurance coverage for the value of the items. How much are the missing items worth? They cost me $34,500. Well, the insurance company will cover you for 10% of the value, so you could claim 3450 from them. Just fill in the form on our website, and when the loss is confirmed, you'll receive the money within one week. We will refund the rest of the money to you within a month, so you won't suffer a financial loss. That sounds fine. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions five to ten. I'll just need to take a list of the missing items from you, so we can check it against our records. Is that okay? Sure, no problem. Unfortunately, a lot of the items are one of a kind and therefore irreplaceable. There were some small items, such as lamps and chairs, that aren't very valuable. However, there was a large item of antique furniture and a bag full of first edition books, which were among the first ever to be printed on a press. Right. Okay. Is there anything else? Yes. I also purchased a Victorian rocking horse for my daughter, some large oil paintings originating from the Edwardian period, and a few decorative fruit bowls. Right. Okay. I've taken a list of your missing items, so I'll phone the warehouse to see if any of them are lying around. Ah, I almost forgot. There were a couple of other pieces that I've spotted on your website and would like to order. Can I do that now? Of course, no problem. Can you give me a description of the items that you're looking to purchase? There was a gold clock and a golden framed vintage mirror. Okay, perfect. I'll charge the items to the payment card that you used before. And they should be delivered to you within the next week. Is there anything else that I can do for you today? Yes, two of the items that I received in the shipment are damaged, so I need to make a claim for a partial refund. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I need to take down a few details of the actual damage over the phone before you put in a full report. Can you tell me which pieces are damaged? A drawer is missing from the antique mahogany desk, and there is also a dent on one of the corners. So it's unusable. I see. Any idea of the price of repairing it? No. Well, I don't think it can be repaired. I will need a new one. Okay. I'll make a note of that, and we'll see what we can do. Anything else? I also purchased a set of dining chairs with navy leather padding. However, the colour is faded, and one of the legs has completely split down the middle. Okay. Are there any other damaged pieces? Yes, I purchased a set of Chinese crockery to furnish my dining room table. However, when I opened the box, I found that a cup was missing and that some plates had smashed. Four, actually. And is that all of the items? Yes, I think that's all. Right. I'll calculate the value of the damaged items and will issue you a refund. Okay. Thank you so much for your help. No problem at all. It was my pleasure. Goodbye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a tour guide introducing a resort called Mangrove Tree. First, you'll have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to seventeen. Welcome to all of you. Can everybody see and hear me? Good. I'm David, your guide for this tour of the Mangrove Tree Resort. I'll start today with some general background information. As there have been a number of changes made, I printed the map of the new complex for each of you. And I just like to point out where everything is, and then you can take a look at it for yourself. Basically, the best feature of our new location is that we have our own private beach, which is on the left and accessible directly from the hotel. 
Now we're standing at the information desk and we're going to look at the views in each direction. Out to the west, there's a gift shop where guests can shop for small trinkets made by local villagers from shells and starfish. If you look carefully up there, on the other side of the restaurant, there's a state-of-the-art spa facility just next to the grove of palm trees, where guests can have treatments including massage or detoxify their body in the steam room. A major drawback of our previous hotel complex was that there was no room for an on-site helicopter port, which meant that our most important guests were forced to commute from the local airport. As we were unable to construct a suitable facility on the eastern side, we have constructed a large heliport to the north. Guests wishing to stretch their legs after a long flight can simply head south to the tennis courts for a match on our splendidly manicured courts. Now if you look in front of you, there's a swimming pool in the centre equipped with slides and a diving board, which is the main feature of the new complex, and is overlooked by all of the other buildings. We have decided to maintain the family-friendly status of our original hotel. However, from guests, sir, we have come to realise that parents also enjoy time to relax without having to look after their children. Therefore, we have constructed a fun play centre where parents can leave their children with a trained childminder and take some time for themselves. This facility is located just to the north of the swimming pool and is covered with a small canopy to protect the children from the sun. Many of our working guests will require access to a quiet space for work. If you direct them just south of the swimming pool, they will discover our conference centre, which comes complete with meeting rooms, offices and Wi-Fi access. In order to access the Wi-Fi network, they should simply report to the information desk, where an assistant will provide them with a personal password. This desk is situated just between the conference centre and the beach. Finally, the complex also contains a large sports centre where guests can enjoy our gym facilities and take part in sessions for yoga and pilots. Overlooking the swimming pool from the southeast, the centre offers stunning views of the entire complex and across the ocean. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Next, I would like to discuss our new restaurant, which is run by the award-winning chef Alberto Brava. Every week he will offer a new menu of fresh seafood, such as crab and sea bass, which has been caught that day by local fishermen. The daily menu will include a range of organic meats and vegetables freshly grilled on the barbecue, served with a selection of specially prepared sauces and spices. There is no menu specifically for vegetarians, however there will be a large range of grilled vegetables for them to choose. The hotel now has a selection of sweets to cater to our more discerning guests and provide for special occasions. As these sweets are finely decorated with furniture and paintings, they are not suitable for families with children. Our tiki sweet is the finest of them all. It is slightly too ornate for business people, but would be perfect for couples on their honeymoon who may even have been married in the hotel. Finally, I would like to share some exciting news. Our hotel has won awards in the past for its fantastic service. However, we have just won the prestigious Green Award for our efforts in reducing our carbon footprint. The award will be proudly displayed in the restaurant facility, where it can be admired by our guests and staff alike. Well, here we are back at our starting point, the information desk. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students, James and Kate, talking about their studies and part-time jobs. First, you'll have some time to look at questions 21 to 25.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Kate, I'm really busy at the moment trying to manage both my schoolwork and part-time job. Oh, James, that sounds like a lot to handle. Where do you work? I managed to get a job working in the local bakery, learning how to make bread and cakes. Since I'm studying business, it's really useful to experience at first hand how a shop is run and interact with the customers. Wow, it sounds really interesting. I'd love to come in and try the produce one day. Is it nearby? It's about 15 minutes away, which is frustrating because it's too far to walk from my house and I have to drive there. Despite the commute, my tutor recommended it to me as it's renowned in certain circles for being a very well-run and successful business. Is it a part of the Kingfisher Baker's chain? No, it's an independent family-run store, which is good because they're really supportive and eager to help me with the information I need. How do you find the theoretical aspect of the schoolwork? I find the practical work far more interesting, but my tutors are really enthusiastic and I get on well with my classmates, which makes the lessons a lot more enjoyable. Also, I recently found out that I can complete the theoretical aspect of the course within one year because of the practical experience I'm getting. Wow, that's great. I know, I was so relieved. I find the theory pretty hard to understand, so I was really worried about taking it for another year. Do you get assessed every term or just once at the end of each academic year? No, there's an assessment every term, which is great because it really takes the pressure off. In the first term, it's really relaxed. You conduct your own experiments on your topic of choice, and then everyone in your class assesses each other as a practical exercise. It's just a shame that practical experience doesn't count towards the grades. Yes, that's true. Anyway, enough about me. What are you studying? Oh, I'm not sure what I want to study yet, but I've been making enquiries about the English language course. Do you know what career path you're interested in following? Since Spanish is my first language, I thought that studying English would be really beneficial if I decided to apply for a job in England. I really enjoy art, and I'm very creative, but I don't think that becoming an artist is a very practical choice. I was thinking of using my passion for art in a different way, like working as a curator in an art exhibition, for example. Wow, that sounds really interesting. I think you'd be good at that. The problem is that the course is very expensive, as you have to buy materials yourself, and they don't offer any scholarships to cover expenses. I need to order a catalogue of the courses on offer so I can see if there are any other modules that might perhaps be cheaper to study. Luckily, the courses don't start until September, so at least you have plenty of time to get organised. I can't believe I have to wait until September. I'm already so excited about starting. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. What other art-focused modules could you choose from? History of art is my first choice, since there isn't so much expense involved. I think it would be really interesting, as they invite a number of guest lecturers from across the globe to speak on specialist subjects. That sounds great! What about sculpture? Well, sculpture looked like a really suitable option at first, since it's the easiest course. But, again, the utensils and materials aren't provided, so you have to spend a lot of money on supplies. I'm also considering the option of digital painting. There isn't much reading involved, and the accommodation is located inside the studio, so you would never have to worry about commuting. Commuting is such an inconvenience. So that's definitely a big advantage. What do you think of art theory? 
That's definitely an option for me. There are no exams, as you get assessed on your coursework and research is conducted independently, so you can work from home, which is really convenient. The only other option is photography, but I'm not so keen on that. Why not? I've just never really been interested in it, and I see it more as a medium for documentation rather than an art form. You're also required to buy one of those really expensive cameras with a digital display and micro focus capabilities, which I can't afford. Well, let me know what course you decide on. I will. Thanks for talking it over with me. No problem. See you later. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a talk on the subject of birds in New Zealand. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to look at birds native to New Zealand, delving into the facts and exploring methods of protecting these species from extinction. It may surprise you to hear that there are thousands of bird species that are endemic to New Zealand. That is to say that they are not found anywhere else on the globe. Since most of these birds live on a diet of freshly caught fish, they often nest along the coastline, or if they need to catch freshwater fish, the neighbouring river. Once they have mated, the female birds will collect twigs and pieces of debris to build nests where she can safely hatch her eggs out of the reach of predators. When humans arrived in New Zealand about seven hundred years ago, rats were carried on the ships with them. The rats flourished in the warm climate and put pressure on the native bird populations, in particular on the flightless species. In 1984, researchers found that only three pairs of flightless bird species remained in existence, and that even these faced severe threats. New Zealand is now a world leader in facilitating the recovery of severely endangered species from the brink of extinction. Every year, researchers carry out surveys in order to monitor the fluctuating levels of bird numbers and species living in New Zealand. Due to the migration patterns of many of the species, it is particularly hard to estimate the bird numbers accurately. Since many may have flown to other countries in search of mates and warmer climates, and thus not appear in the survey, bird numbers are also particularly sensitive to environmental influences, in particular to those related to human activity. 
everyday activities, such as farming or constructing a home, can have a massive impact on the local populations. Forests that serve as a habitat for thousands of birds can be entirely eradicated to make fields for crops or to provide wood for construction, having a disastrous impact. It is not only the human influence that threatens the future of many bird species, since many predatory animal species have flourished in New Zealand. One of these species is the mantain snake, which was introduced from Australia and has decimated the population of killdeer birds. These birds nest on the ground and often return to find that their eggs have been devoured by the egg-eating snakes. One cannot dismiss, of course, the pressure that nature itself imposes on the survival of many bird species. Natural disasters, such as storms, can be devastating, tearing apart forests and leaving thousands of destroyed nests in their wake. Monsoons flood the rivers and often drown many of the flightless bird species that are unable to escape. Unfortunately, the greatest threat to bird numbers in New Zealand is illegal hunting, which is almost impossible to prevent. Many endangered bird species are on display at the National Zoo, and it is essential that urgent measures are taken to protect them. The zoo recently employed an expert in bird protection, who recommended that they should employ a guard to protect their birds from poachers. The expert also pointed out that the birds can become very stressed in situations where the public are able to approach them too closely, suggesting that the administration install a fence network to keep the public a safe distance away from the birds. Despite this threat to birds in captivity, it is the freely roaming birds that are most at risk. Efforts are being made to educate people on how they can contribute towards protecting birds that are living in the wild. Finally, research has shown that one of the most effective methods of informing the public on the importance of protecting the bird populations is through the media. I advise you all to read the articles written on this topic in specialist journals and also carry out research on the internet. Each and every one of you could make an enormous contribution to the protection of birds if you put your mind to it. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.